Hello everyone, welcome to day 33 of our blog series on John's Gospel and our current theme of spirituality. Our link readings today are from Ezekiel chapter 47 verses 1 to 12 and from Revelation chapter 22 verses 1 to 5. So you get a bargain today, you get two readings for the price of one. The readings both focus on God's will to reinvigorate and renew the world through his living water. A prophecy from the Old Testament fulfilled in the coming of Jesus as the promised Messiah. <coughs> Excuse me. We see in Ezekiel water flowing in all directions from the temple. A flow of water not from a royal palace or a sports arena or even a marketplace, but from God's house. Now Israel, as many of us can testify from previous experience, is very hot and arid. Some of its desert landscape is actually bordering on the lunar. On our trip from St Andrew's Church in 2018, I recall with much gratitude Ibrahim, our coach driver, uh, had what appeared to be an endless supply of refrigerated bottled water, which he gave out readily to us thirsty pilgrims who'd been walking and exploring all day. We were refreshed daily in our spirituality and knowledge in the Holy Land, but the water itself was what revitalised us and kept us going. In the arid geography of Israel, a river, like the one from the temple, was a blessing, indeed a miracle, bringing growth, vitality and hope. Necessary for the preservation of life itself. Water is the liquid version of the bread of life. As we see in Psalm 46, it says, There is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God. And in Psalm 42, we're reminded that flowing streams are parallels to the flowing life of God. Like a river or stream, our lives too can ebb and flow, meander a little maybe, and have high and low tides. We can feel all at sea, washed up, even washed out. Our hopes and dreams eroded like a river bank, worn away by flowing tidal currents. But the gospel of grace conveyed into the hearts of believers is what holds us firm against the rushing tide, and is poured out upon the world through Jesus' death on the cross. The variance between Ezekiel's account of this river and the one in Revelation centres mainly on the source. God and his love for us are the flowing current of both rivers. But in terms of the source, whilst Ezekiel saw the river flowing from the temple, John in Revelation saw it flowing from the throne of God. We see Ezekiel battling the river and gradually getting out of his depth. Therefore he had to tread water before swimming. We're often like Ezekiel, aren't we? We feel like we're treading water, just keeping our head above the surface maybe. But if we have faith, God will save us. However, conversely, he also wants us and encourages us to go deeper, to let go of the sides, to submerge so that we are eventually carried along by his current. He wants us to go with his flow. Our faith journey should be floating along, but venturing further and deeper into the gospel teachings, into his word. God, of course, will bring us safely to the shore if we trust in him. Indeed, once he was out of the river, Ezekiel noticed the beauty of God's creation. So many trees, a multitude of fish in the river, and fresh clean water itself. The lifeless waters of the Dead Sea were healed. The River Jordan flows into it, but very little ever flowed out of it. The Dead Sea has its name for a reason. It really is the only place on earth that David Attenborough could never make a documentary. But the beauty of Ezekiel discovering is a fitting image of God at work as seen in the Gospels. Ezekiel realised that renewal was in God's hands through his loving grace. Indeed, all renewal tends to flow from a fresh and powerful vision of God. His living water, our renewal in baptism and growth in our own faith journey. As like Ezekiel, we hope for the coming of the promised Messiah. A tiny trickle of water grows into a stream, then tends to grow into a river, and then flows out into the sea. God shows us his blessing and his healing through the power of his living water. This is where death becomes life, where we need God's renewing grace and love. Jesus got up and called out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. Out of a believer's heart shall flow rivers of great water. We need really to have a thirst for Jesus' ways and his teachings. To quench our physical thirst is great, but only by submerging ourselves deeper in his living water will we quench our spiritual thirst. 
We have to unblock and discover the springs of new life, to find the source of the river which is at our baptism, and to immerse ourselves in his living waters as we go through our lives. We are blessed that should the water get too much for us, we won't sink. Jesus will be there to encourage us, to encourage our swim in his current, to go deeper with him, but never so we're out of our depth. Swim with Jesus, everyone. He doesn't just want us treading water. God bless everyone. Have a good day. Bye for now.